Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of That Pop Culture Show, where we explore everything and anything pop culture. We're your hosts. I'm Cody Frederick. I'm Jason DeBoard. Let's get poppin'. On this week's pop profile, we have with us Broadway actor Donnell James Foreman. You may have seen him in productions such as Book of Mormon, Mamma Mia, and none other than Hairspray. Don't I did that. I did you that. did that. <laughs> I Welcome. did that. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, man. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, we're so excited. So yeah. you were in all of these incredible productions in yeah. New York City. Yeah. Well, so I've done a bu- I've done all of them on tour. Okay. All three of those on tour. I did Book of Mormon on Broadway. Okay. In Australia. Oh. And also on the road. So I've done wow. that one the most, but I've done those three. Those are my big, my big three. Being on Broadway, what's that like? I mean, what is the schedule? It's a like? lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, it's eight shows a week. It's amazing. Oh, my God. It's amazing. But it's eight shows a week. Um, depending on your schedule, it varies. Our show, uh, we had two Saturday and two Sunday, so a full weekend of oh shows. Uh, you know, it depends on if, if the whole family can come and see the show or not. Sure. That kind of depends on what your schedule is. Right. Um, but I've done, like, when I think back, I've done a lot of shows through my life a lot of times a week. When I was 12 years old, I did my first professional production, and it was six times a week. Wow. And, like, I think back, and I'm like, that's not a normal thing no. <laughs> that 12-year-olds do. No, it's right. not. Yeah. No, I, I, when I was 12 years old, uh, I was watching movies probably 12 times, yeah, 12 six times, times, week, six yeah. times a week, you know, but yeah. like doing stuff like that, that's incredible. Man. Yeah. But I feel like it, tra- it trained me to like, to be ready for that. And I, I, I didn't realize at the time that that was such a like undeniable training camp for me being 12 years old and doing that many shows right? and having to build up the stamina and the consistency and all that. And like, those are all skills that help. You know, when you get to Broadway. Cause well, well, when you were 12, was that the intention? Well, you know, I always loved to sing and dance. It was like, I love to sing and dance and tell stories and be funny and whatever. But I didn't know what that, how I could do all those things at the same time. Sure. And uh, I grew up in Albany, New York, so upstate New York. And they, there's a theater there every summer and they do shows. And so my mom would take me. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. But I still didn't really have an idea of it being a career, sure. a life, any of that. And so... Like my grow, growing up, my musical knowledge was The Wiz and Grease. <laughs> we watched, those are the two movies that we watched all the time and Little Shop right. of Horrors. Right, right, so right. So it was right. like, mm-hmm. those are the three. But those, that's a great standard to have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I, you know, I just thought these were just movies and like whatever. And so when I would go see them, see the shows live, I was like, oh, wait. Like, and then the people call on stage and I can see them walking off stage and like, oh my God, I love that. And so it just <laughs> happened that uh, they were doing The Music Man. And so in my school, they had a bulletin up that because they're looking for kids. Sure. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, Mom, like the shows that we go see, they're looking for kids. And I didn't know <laughs> anything. I mean, no headshot, no resume, nothing. I was not a theater kid. Like, so we sang uh, Hard Knock Life in choir that year. <laughs> and that was the song. In choir? Thought, yes. It was like, you know, sixth grade, like a class. It wasn't like, you know, an elective. It was like you had to learn how to like. Sing Hard Knock Life? La, la, la. Yeah. Like, yeah right. I mean, it was like. Hard Knock Life, Oliver, I'm sure we did, right, like, you right, know, right. all those. So, but I show up and it's, you know, it's, it's theater kids, sure, sure, you know, with their stage parents. I did not have stage parents. Right. My mom was like, I'll pick you after. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'll so, see you at four. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and I had my, I did Hard Knock Life. And that's why I booked my first show. It was at 12 years old. It was a professional paid show. And I was like, oh, wow. And then that theater actually... And I want to fact check this. I don't know if this is true or not, but (laughs) the theater, uh, they did a night show, which was mostly adults. So that was Music Man and they had the kids and they did a teen show in the daytime. But you had to be 13 to 18 to be in the show, but they needed one more cast member and they were doing Grease. You were it. And I That's literally, what I was <laughs> thinking, right? And so I (laughs) did both shows and I don't want to say this on record. No. (laughs) <laughs> but I think I am the first Yeah. I don't want to say the only But I think I may have been the first person to do both shows In one summer Wow So for the two months I was doing two shows a day Six times a week Grease at five yeah. Music Man at eight Wow But what's a 12 year old brain going to do Like I have all the time in the world Right I'm exactly. not doing anything I have all the energy <laughs> Like my mom, I'm sure my mom was like, yes, go away <laughs> for eight hours and I do have some somebody shows. that I don't have to pay to watch you. Yeah, yeah. and I'm getting paid to do the show. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, so, you, so you got, oh, sorry, Jason. Do you have siblings? I have a younger sister. 
Is she yeah. an introvert? No, 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 we're the same. Oh, we're wow. exactly the same. Oh. We're, we're the same. Uh, she's a singer songwriter. Oh. Um, and so she, she, does, she records her own music and yeah. Oh, that's awesome. She did theater as well, like in school, but now she fully does music. Right. Wow. Yeah. So was it, I mean, first show that you auditioned for, you book it. And <laughs> then uh, it sounds like you can kind of continue to do that. Did you have, like, were the expectations that you were going to just book anything you, you tried well, at that point? At 13, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, then I, I, yeah, and then I, well, so I did the show the next year. Okay. Which was The Wiz, which I loved. Yeah. Dream. Like, I've done now the two, the two shows that I grew up watching. Right. I did. Yeah. What characters did you play? So, in Greece, I was ensemble, and <laughs> they added a line for me because <laughs> I was little and 12, and, you know, right. they were probably all, like, 17, 18. Yeah. That were playing these roles. And so, they added a line. I don't know if it was Frenchie or Marty, but someone. I walked past them, and they're like, oh, the freshmen are getting so much smaller nowadays. <laughs> I felt so special. Uh, and then in oh, the Music awesome. Man, I was also a, a kid ensemble. And then the Wiz, I played the Wiz. Oh wow! And that was a lot of fun. That's wow. cool. Uh, and it was full full camp. Like I had, like when they were, when they discover me in my lair, they know it's not that I'm not real. I have like rollers and a robe, and like it was so amazing. Uh, but then after that, I didn't do the next few years, and so that was my oh, first. Interesting. Like, I think I needed to be knocked down a peg. Sure. And I think they were like, we're going to let Local you sit. Yeah, they're made. like, no, they literally were like, we're going to let you have a moment to sit down. But I was doing theater in high school at the time, so I never sure. stopped. Um, but it wasn't until high school that I realized, like, oh, this could be a life and a career. I didn't know that. I didn't know what Broadway was. I just knew that there were shows. Sure. And you could do shows. And some of them were movies. And, like, I didn't have that kind of knowledge. And then once I started doing shows in high school, I met older kids that were like, okay, Listen to this, 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 this. These mm. are the people you need to listen to. Like right. these are the shows. This is Broadway. And my theater program in schools like the Drama Club would take trips every year to go see Broadway shows. Mm. Oh. So that and that was amazing. Because we're only two and a half hours away right, being right, in Albany. Right. right. Um, so I and it was I think four trips a year and it was two shows each time. So we would go on a Wednesday, see two shows. Oh, that's really cool. So I saw Hairspray, Wicked, um, Lion King, Brooklyn, Moving Out. Um, La Boheme, tons of stuff. Sure, um, sure. And that's when I was like, oh, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Right. I was like, this is, at, at, at 16, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, right. Like, but you know, that, that at least gives you some motivation to do something. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of kids at 16 that are like, yeah. you know, mom nice. wants me to go to college. Oh, yeah. It kept, <laughs> I mean, it kept me on a very, very focused path, which I'm thankful for. Yeah, that sure. My teenage years were very focused and it was just about doing shows, building skills, right. you know, applying for colleges, all that. And that, and that was, it set me up. I didn't, <laughs> my college story is another thing because I ended up leaving to work. Right. Um, but it was always the goal of like New York, Broadway, that's the dream. And then you lived it. Yeah. Wow. Which is another, it's like, it's crazy. Yeah. And like my first, I like, it's been 21 years since my first show. Wow. Yeah. And I did all the things that I wanted to do, which is not what many people can say, which no, is like, yeah. I have to pinch myself. And Especially be like, wow. at your age, right? Like yeah. that's a, that's a big thing. Yeah. So then at that point, after you'd gotten into, you ended up leaving school to then. That was hairspray. Was that what was what I left school for. Right, yeah. Right. So I, with college, it was like, I either want to go to school in New York right. to be in that bubble. or I want to go away and I want to do like four years of intense training somewhere else. And like, I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to be close enough where I can like kind of know what's going on. I don't want it. So I auditioned for like CCM, which is Cincinnati, mm -hmm. Michigan. And then it was Pace, which is where I went in New York, mm -hmm. Wagner in New York, Marymount, NYU, that, those things. And so I ended up going to Pace and just being in New York. Opened so many opened doors. Opened so, so many. And they were, they were very, very adamant. Like, audition go out there and do, like we don't want to they keep want you, you to get yeah, out there because they're like you there's there's such a thing about being in school but then there's auditioning right mm -hmm. it's a completely different thing and that's wow. a completely different skill set right and so they're like yeah you don't might not book the job you might not take it whatever but go out there and get in those rooms and see yeah. what it means to be like this is my package in two minutes right not this is my hour class right, and right. i can figure it out and so i i loved that aspect there was never mm -hmm. any shame or like no, don't go to that. Don't audition for that. It was very much like get the experience and do it. And so from doing that, you meet people and you never know what happens. And so I went to school for a year and a half 
and then I booked the Hairspray tour. And I was like, that is my dream. Cause that was that was the first high school trip was hairspray. <laughs> it was hairspray and Thoroughly Mountain Millie. Right. Oh wow. And I don't even remember Millie because I was so obsessed with hairspray. <laughs> Sorry, Sutton. But I was like, I was so obsessed with hairspray that I was like, that I I that was the first time I had ever seen something and felt like I have to do that. Right. There's no other question. Like that, and there's only been two shows that I've seen that I felt that about. Well, right. I shouldn't say that. There's more shows that I've felt that about, but two that I've done. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was the first one that I was like, hmm. yeah, this is right. And so then my high school career was basically just like, how can I play seaweed at some point in my life? <laughs> and it was like, that was the goal. Like, while it's still on Broadway, I had to play seaweed. So I ended up doing the tour, which was amazing because, you know, I was 19. You got to see the, you got to see the country. Yeah, I got to see the country. We played yeah. China for a month. So I also like, oh, wow. got to travel all over the world. But like just, and that gave me all of my like tools in the toolbox and also like, how do you do a show every day in right. any condition? Right. When you're on a bus for eight hours, <laughs> when you're sleeping on the floor of the bus, when you're like, all of that. When you have 12 one-nighters in a row in different cities. When you're living with your castmates. Yes. It's like the no, real this, world. No. And I'm so happy that, you know, I say like my first professional job was Music Man because I got a little check at 12. Yeah, yeah. But like this was my first professional yeah. job. Right, right. And I love that it was my first because it it took the glamour out of all of it. Right, <laughs> it was right, like, right. You know, it's like the show was amazing. I loved doing the show. I loved my cast. It's like, but we're in, you know, motels and sleeping on buses, getting on the bus right. at 4 a.m., right. driving eight hours, straight to sound check, doing the show. But it was like, it was amazing. And also, like, that's the time to do it. Yeah. You know? And like, you're 19. I'm 19. Like, like, what else well, is, yeah. what the hell else are you going to do? Yeah. And I was like, great. I can be independent in a way. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not in school. I'm not relying on my parents for things. Like, I'm making my own money. I'm on the road. I'm seeing the country. I'm doing what I've wanted to do my whole life. Yeah. I'm just sleeping on the bus. <laughs> but I'm glad that I did that, you know? <laughs> uh, and then I did Mama Mia right after oh. that. And that was much better. That was a much, that was much more, uh, Extravagant yeah, moment. Sure, yeah, 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 sure. yeah. Oh, well, that's awesome. So, so wow. I, I mean, Donnell, Donnell, I'm like, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with the man I see in front of me. Like, oh, well, you, thank you. You got thank your you. stuff together. Thank like, you. it seems like that. So, at, at any point when you were doing that, were you like, I, I'm curious to see what it's like to, to act in front of the camera? You know, it's, that's always been in the back of my mind, but the world's are presented to you so differently mm -hmm. when you're in school and when you're training. Sure. It's very much like, are you doing theater or are you doing TV film? Right. And being in New York and loving theater and growing up doing it, it was always like, oh, that's what I want to do. I watch TV movies all the time, but it always felt like a different area. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, recently, I would say in the last like 10 years, it has shifted of where things film and how accessible it is and seeing more theater people on screen and all that has changed my, my perspective. But I spent, I focused my whole training on theater. theater so it never felt like something that was right there. Sure. I always felt like a, I had to get to it. But now living out here, I'm like, well, that's what it is. And so and mm. I'm ready to, to jump into that because I've done, I've done the stage trajectory that I wanted. And I was like, oh, great. I got to Broadway and then it's like, What's oh, this is the same. This is the same. Like, this is what it's going to be. Right. And that's amazing. Like, I got my first dream. I never thought I'd have my first dream. But what's the next one? Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I, I'm blessed to have that yeah. opportunity to even say that. Yeah. Uh, so now it's like I'm fully uh, redirecting my, my focus. But it's been crazy because I'm like, oh, that was 20 years of like theater. Yeah. yeah. Well, so when that's you're it. acting, how much do you feed off of having an audience? A lot. Yeah. I would say, well, I would say a lot when you're doing the, a show that's long running mm -hmm. and it's the same. Right. You know, I, I envy TV and film because I'm like, every time that they do something, it's new. Right. Every sure. episode of the show is new. You're playing the right. same person, right. but you're doing something different every time versus <laughs> this is the same show, but it varies based on the reaction. It does. Like you, the energy, you feel it in the room. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I am curious the difference in film because you don't have that live in the moment. Oh, yeah. that joke was funny. Yeah. That landed. That thing was. Yeah. There's definitely something about having an audience that definitely drives something. Whereas if you're filming, you might take 15 takes, but yeah, 
You, you got to do it. You got to do it. You, right. you got to do it with I, like with chirping. And I like do have that <laughs> skill, though. That there is a skill about being able to do something sure at your full capacity over and over and over again. Yeah. Right. 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 You know. And so I have done that. Yeah. I just know that there's a difference in the spontaneity yeah. and the way you can feel out a moment. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And also in terms of acting, like on stage, you're sort of projecting more, right? Yes. Versus it's definitely bigger. Yeah. Filmed. Yeah. Definitely bigger. And that's, I mean, that's a whole other skill set mm -hmm. of acting for this and acting for this. Right. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 right. yeah. Do you have but any reservations? Any concerns? Not concerns. <laughs> Challenges? Um, I just, for me, it's like anything new is exciting and scary. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. anything in, in a new, fo in a new field. So I'm just like preparing myself for that journey. I haven't done something new in a very long time, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I'm always about the challenge and right. about the fear and how do, how do you turn the fear into excitement? Right. You know, one of my favorite, I watch a lot of Ayanla Fix My Life. And one of, one the of her, what is this? It's Ayanla Fix My Life. So Ayanla Van Zant is okay. a life coach. <laughs> and uh, she, she, she's in the Oprah tree. She's part yeah, of the yeah, 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 yeah. um, And one of her famous <laughs> quotes is, if you're doing something new or you're doing something, you know, uh, that you feel is scary. She's like, if you don't have a little bit of pee running down your leg, it's not worth it. <laughs> oh. So I have taken that motto. Oh, I haven't peed yet. But I was like, <laughs> I've been peeing this whole time for you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but I know that if it's scary, if it makes my heart race. Right. It's, it's, good. What it, it's the direction I'm supposed to go in. And so I feel that very much. And right. I know that it's right. But it's also like, I don't want to yeah. say that I'm <laughs> done with Broadway or done with theater. Sure. I just, this, the pandemic has been such a, yeah. it's been such a blessing in, in many ways to fully take a step back and be like, okay, having time off mm -hmm. without having to think about going back to work or anything like that, like, okay, what do I want to step into next? And so I had a lot of time to self-reflect and think, and it was like, I think it's time to jump in something new. Sure. And I was tired of sitting in my apartment in New York. So I was like, let's go to California <laughs> where I could go hiking and go to the beach and have some space. <laughs> and I think I, I think I need to pee myself a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, I think that's how I feel. Like, no, I, I felt it coming on. I was like, you need to go out there and do that. <laughs> go out there, yeah. yeah. You know, being out here in LA, how different are you? How, how different is the feel? It's different, it's different. Um, also, I'm a new driver. Like all of the, all, all oh, the yeah. things are new. All the things are new. Right, right, right. So it's the driving. It's the time management. I'm very punctual, <laughs> and that's not a thing out here. No, no. And I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I think that's just also theater training. I was yeah, conditioned. Right. If you're on time, you're late. Right, right, right. You yeah. know. So for me, I that's something I have to adjust to. But I love, like, I love the weather. The, the older I got, I was like. I'm born in New York. I love the city, but I love a mountain. Mm -hmm. I love to just wander around and look at nature and not have to drive an hour and a half away to do it. Right. So that I love. Sure. The weather I love. I didn't well, have a winter you, this you year. You lived in upstate too. Yeah. Right? Like you had access. Well, to I had that access, though. but it's still like, I also didn't have a winter this year, which I loved. I was like, I don't right. want to see any snow. Right. I'm good. <laughs> I've seen it. I don't need it anymore. So I like, you know, I, I'm really liking it. And I, I'm also allowing myself to have different dreams out here. Sure. Because in New York, it's very much like Broadway. It's like you have to be in New York to be on Broadway. Right. If you want to be on Broadway, there's really only one place you can live. That's true. And you have to commit everything to that. And I've always had other interests or other um, fields I wanted to get into that can happen other places. Right. But because that was a priority, that's where I was. So what's kind of opening the door for you well, here? I've, I mean, I've always been obsessed with music uh -huh. and being in the music business. And I've, I've loved that before I loved theater. Mm -hmm. But it was always like, that's a one in a million type situation. I don't even know how to get involved. In and I mean every aspect of music, whether mm -hmm. it be as an artist or doing A&R or magic, all of it just seemed so like, oh, that's yeah. like crazy Hollywood right. insane. But I could drive two hours to go see a Broadway show, so I knew that it was right there. You know, it's like, <laughs> not, like not, not to d d d d d make it less, but it, well, that just felt insane. But now, you know, with my sister making music right. and me working with her, it's like, oh no, these things are still real and tangible, and I mm -hmm. and it happens out here. Yes. So it's just excited me in a different way. It's also scary because these are all brand new things. Sure. But I'm just, I said, I'm living in a spaghetti at the wall moment. Right. And I'm out here 
figuring out what sticks and what I want to do because I, I've wanted to work on TV film. I wanted to do commercials. I wanted to work in music. And so I'm just seeing what happens. Right. You know? The other day I was walking here because we're here in Beverly Hills and I saw Babyface. And oh my I was God. Like, oh my God, it's Babyface. And this guy, like, runs up to Babyface yeah. and he's like, man, I know you're real busy. Yeah. I know you're real yeah. busy, but could you listen to this demo oh, and really? my emails? Yes, like yeah. he was handing it and Babyface was like, shoot your shot. You gotta shoot okay, the shot. Man. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. Like Babyface. Just yeah. Kind of oh, I don't know. And see, I'm so like, I admire that person. Yeah. And I then I'm too. like, I don't even know if I'd be able to speak. I don't know, like, that's just such a, so, he's such a foundation of my musical taste sure, that sure. I don't, it's the same thing with like, with Janet Jackson. It's right. like if I ever met Janet Jackson, which <laughs> January, 2020, we were at the same establishment an hour apart oh. and my friend texted me and I, I almost lost my mind. I didn't go back. <laughs> I didn't go back. But I think of those times that I'm like, I don't know if I know what to say. Right. Yeah. Right. Because all I can say is thank you for everything. And you've heard that already. <laughs> or, you just, like, or you just be like, like baby face, Janet. Uh, baby face, Janet. <laughs> they're like, baby face, you gave me every, okay. Uh, thank you for all the Tony and Whitney and everything. And like, okay. And then like, what do you do? You know? It's true. But I got to get used to that because I'm out here now. I got to get do. used to that. I it's different when you're in a show and celebrities come. Because then they're coming to see the show. And so there's a little more of a like. Did you, you, did you have Yeah, people have come, come, yeah. And then they came backstage? Yeah, yeah. And they talked to you? Yeah. And what was that like? It's great because you're able to like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get out of my costume. I'm going to take a minute to like. Oh, sure. Oh, give me. Yeah, you came to see me. Huh? You know, but like, but, but they're, but they've always been like, I mean, my, the first one I think of is Jill Scott. She was amazing and so sweet and mm -hmm. like spent 45 minutes with us after just talking. Cause she used to do theater before, yeah. before she, you know, did music and it was like, Talking to someone for me, it was the special treat because I was like, I can now see someone that's done both, right? That right. I admire, and she was just so open and and yeah. When you, it's nice to meet people and feel like an even kind of playing field right. because it's not right. like I'm meeting you as a fan; I'm meeting right. you as an appreciator. Sure, you know. So, what advice would you give to young people that are interested in acting in any capacity? Like, since you've found yeah. so much success early on, I would say, okay, if I had advice. I would say. This is the advice yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, <clears throat> I say it starts with believing in yourself because there is so much outside influence, mm -hmm. suggestion, negativity, comments, thoughts, whatever. If you don't have your own view of your artistry sure. or your trajectory, you're going to get lost. Right. And that's very hard to have because theater is also such a collaborative effort. There's so many opinions, so many voices yeah. and thoughts that it's hard to know who you are. But I think that's, that's a main thing. And I do believe that young people these days have a much tighter grasp on that. Sure. Than like a self-awareness. Self-awareness yeah, than even yeah. I had growing up. And just learn everything. Because mm -hmm. you never know, and, and the times have changed. I remember even something like growing up and being like, oh, there's no black people in that show, or there's no whatever in that show, and thinking I couldn't do certain things. Sure. Mm -hmm. And even those notions have been thrown out of the window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited for, for young people to just fully embrace who they are and, and jump into their artistry and whatever that means and find their lane and rather than trying to fit into someone else's lane. Sure, right. sure. Like, you know? be, be, be the truck that pounds through the wall because... Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Yeah, that's the, we learn that. That's the only way, like, you know. And that's and and oddly, like I think that's kind of the way. No matter like what race or gender you might be, like there's always going to be a barrier. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just barrel through, yep. and uh, you know, just don't be an asshole. <laughs> that's literally what the woman that ran my department. Her motto was "Don't be an asshole," <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much covers a lot of it. It does. You know, yeah. know who you are and don't be an asshole. Right. 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 And you'll make it. <laughs> but anyway, you, know, you know, yeah, I just think, I, I took your advice, Donnell. I, I saw your show. And I, <laughs> I'm myself, I'm not an asshole. Are you booked? Did you get the job? Great. Yeah. But no, it's, and I think, yeah, learn everything. Learn everything because it only helps. I'm all about all the tools in the toolbox because you never know when you'll have to use them. Sure. So, and I, and I, you know, I regret not taking more dance classes growing up or more acting classes because I think, oh, I could have, I would have been more comfortable at this audition. Mm, right. I would have felt more prepared for this if I had just invested that, you know, moment rather than thinking, oh, I don't, I don't do that. I don't do that. Like right. pee on your leg, do it. Right. It's like if it scares you, do it. 
Well, and I also you know? find it like I have convers I've had conversations with younger people. And there is there's something when you're like 20, you're 19 and you're like, "Oh, the world's my oyster." You don't think that, but you don't <laughs> there's there's a degree of invincibility and there's that naivete yeah. that like d that that stops you from really hindering yourself. And then as time progresses, you gain this experience which I imagine for, as an actor that's helped you. Yeah. Like life experience in general helps shape the way you even approach things. So, uh, my point is be good <laughs> and live <laughs> and live, <laughs> and live your also, life. Also, you do have to have a life. Yeah. And I think it's, it is hard. Um, when you're training as an actor, because you, you spend so much time like being good, right? Not, and this is not for everyone, but like not partying or not, sure. you know, going places, not doing, not taking time off from something because, you know, and yeah, life experience will only help. Right, right. And so I'm very much like, as, the older I've gotten, like, I wish I would have maybe taken a little more time before I went to college or like taking mm -hmm. a year off to just like figure some more stuff out. Sure. And I right. think that those notions are changing and I think people are embracing. Right. Living before you just spend all your time in a desk and yeah. learn one skill and right. then get a job and then have a family and then like you're done. It's like you yeah. have to have some other things in there. Well, I definitely think the work life balance culture is very different than what like my parents or my uh -huh. grandparents experienced. And that's, that's just kind of a testament to the changing in times as yeah. well. You know, people don't want to, people look at their parents or their grandparents and they're like, you look like shit. Yeah, I don't want to do you that. You worked real hard and what do you have yeah. for it? You know? And if this year and a half was any indication, it's like, we can all take a little more time. <laughs> <laughs> for our but not Netflix time. No, 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 no. Not, not all the time. But <laughs> you could take a little more time to live. You know. So yeah. when you were out touring, like, what were you doing outside of like working and just? Depend on where we were. So it was, yeah. you know, I learned. So I had three different tours. So I learned as I went along. It was like the first one, I really didn't do anything. The mm -hmm. first tour was just kind of like. Also, I couldn't. I was I was nineteen, so I didn't right. really. I didn't go out at night. I didn't do much. Sure. You know, I, and that was. And I was a lead in the show. So I was very much about doing my right. job, doing the show, whatever. Mamma Mia, I was in the ensemble. It was all of us in our 20s, party city. <laughs> and like, it depends on the, you know, it depends on the city. So, you know, if we're, if, if we're in Memphis, we're gonna go to Sun Studios. If we're yeah. in, you know. So it's like you have your list of like, also because places I've never been before. So it was a lot of the daytime is spent sightseeing. Like the world's biggest like ball of yarn yeah and yeah like it's like go to the chicago bean go you <laughs> right, know, do right, those things right uh go to the restaurants you've seen on you know uh, uh the, the the chefs on chopped the, right. whatever restaurant they have in the, <laughs> the city i'm gonna go see their restaurant yeah, you know yeah, so yeah. it's very much like that and then going out at night um mormon was different because we spent more time in cities than any other show that i had done right so i opened that show and we had 10 months in chicago Right. So it's like we lived, you in, lived Chicago. in Chicago. Yeah. Like, so that was that was a different experience because I didn't have to cram it all into one week. Right. Um, Were you living in a hotel? No. So for for long times, like we would get an Airbnb or okay. some kind of like I guess a corporate housing sure, situation. Sure, sure, um, sure. I didn't like living in a hotel for more than three weeks. Right. Right. That was kind of my personal yeah. limit. Right. Um, just because it. Also, it depends on where you want to live. It's like, do you want to live by the theater, which is which are normally like downtown? Nothing happens after six. Sure. Nothing happens on the weekend type places right. in, the, in most cities. Or I'll get an Airbnb in a cute neighborhood, and I'll yeah. be able to actually take the train. Live there. Yeah, right, like right, DC, right, right. I, like DC, I lived in the neighborhood. I took the train to work every day. Right, right, like, right. Made you feel also not in such a bubble. Right, right, right. right. Because. In the hotel, it's like, I see you when I go in the elevator. I see you when I go downstairs. I see you in the laundry room. I see you in the, okay. I need, I need my own apartment. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. So I learned that. I learned that by tour three. Yeah. <laughs> Experience. Yeah. That's what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Motto's pee yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's, cool. the, theme of, that's, the, that's theme the theme of this episode. episode. Pee yourself a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's not a full, it's not a full release. It's just a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's not. No, it's not a full release. No, 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 no. Sorry no. about that. Each week we ask the question, do you want to touch it? <laughs> well, this week I've gone ahead and pulled out the Jergens because boy, oh boy, are my hands greasy. Uh, Don't know. No. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So uh, these are awesome, man. I mean, 
What do, yeah. what, what do you have here? So Prince has been a major uh, through line through my life. My dad was a huge Prince fan. I remember stealing his uh, two disc of the hits, the B-sides. Sure. And just sitting in my room all night listening. So um, when I was in New York uh, on tour, actually, I decided to do my first one-man show. And I was like, I'm going to do an all-Prince show. And so I did a show of all Prince's music, wow. and we had a live band, and wow. I played four different characters. And so there was like a storyline throughout. But I'd still never seen him live, ever. And what I just, year was this? This was in 2009. Okay. Uh, and then I moved back to New York after tour. And so I think it was 2011, and he was doing his Welcome to America tour. And it was yeah. at MSG, Mass Square Garden. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to ask anyone to go with me because I'm <laughs> spending some money on this ticket. Yeah. And I'm going to go see my idol oh. live, center floor. Like, I'm doing it. So I went, and that's the first time I saw him. And so one of the merch items was this tambourine. And I was like, I'm going to get the tambourine because why not? Right. Like, I don't want a T-shirt or, like, a hat. I was like, yeah. and, and in my house, everyone's like, what is that? Like, why do you have a Prince tambourine? I'm like, that's the <laughs> first time I ever saw him. And so then through the next four years, I saw him about four times yeah, in awesome. various random small venues. And then he passed away in 16. And that was the first celebrity death that I really felt. Right. Sure. And felt a loss. Um, and so he's always just stuck with me. And so this last year, I got to go to Paisley Park for the first time, which was incredible. And I can't wait to go back. And so for Christmas this year, I got this signed Prince print from Paisley Park oh, that I had awesome. no, idea, no idea that I was getting. I was just <laughs> speechless, jaw on the ground. Uh, obviously, it has the like certificate behind it. But I was like, oh, and you can see like the hand smudge of the Sharpie. Sure. Like right. it's real. Yeah. That's and really like, cool. It, it feels very like full circle divine. Like, huh, I went and got this one little thing. I was like, I'm going to have this in my house. And now I have a piece. You have Prince. Yeah, actual. Awesome. He's eyeing you the yeah, whole time. The whole time. Yes. <laughs> Did you no. clean the floor? Yes. Yes. You could not. <laughs> That's not shiny enough. It's very Mona Lisa. They do follow you. <laughs> they, they do. do. They, they follow you. Yeah. Yeah. I like, yeah. I'm looking over and I swear he's got my connection. Yeah. I'm just like <laughs> the purple one is in the house. Oh my hell. Well, yeah. that's so cool. I mean, it's interesting because like seeing a show and Jason has a lot of experience with this, but sh seeing an intimate show of yeah. your favorite musician, it like it changes the whole perspective yeah. of the musician, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, my wife and I, we actually saw Prince. Um, it was like Prince and a piano. So it's uh -huh. when Vanity died and he did the show in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And it was like a month before he died. Yeah. And he was like very emotional from that loss. And it yeah. was like such a moving experience. And I actually, because you're not, if you've never been to a Prince concert, you're not allowed to take your phone out. You can't take pictures. You can't record it. But I did an audio <laughs> recording of the whole show and I go back and listen yeah. to it. And it's like, and then after, you know, he passed away and I listened to it again and I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like he, he was like very emotionally um, just sad by the loss of vanity. Yeah. And, and then like a month later, like who knew, you know, it's just that to me, that was the one that caught me most off guard. I just yeah, didn't same. expect him to go so young. Like he was like seriously the most talented musician I've ever seen on stage. Like he, and I never, I rarely, rarely use the word genius, but he yeah. was like a genius. Mm -hmm. Like he was just, and he, you know, we were talking earlier about an audience, like he totally connected with, people because i've seen him at little tiny venues yeah like dna lounge in san francisco and stuff and you know where it's like i don't know what the capacity was but really small and he would like lock on with like each person in the crowd you know and that's yeah. why you don't take your phone you. out that's right <laughs> you don't yes. want to get caught no <laughs> i did no I, oh, really? I did yeah the first so the second time i saw saw prince was at a city winery in chicago so okay it was like 200 person yep. venue yeah um and, you know, they're very much like, if the yes. phone is out, you will be You're kicked gone. out. Yes. And I stood there with my friend <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to risk it all. <laughs> and this was, but this was back in, this was when, you know, uh, I don't know if it was Instagram or if, I don't know if I shot it on Instagram or Snapchat or something, but it was only like a 10 second clip, a 15 mm -hmm. second clip. Right. It couldn't be that long. Yeah. So I have 10 seconds of Little Red Corvette. Oh, nice. That I will That's my favorite song, actually. Oh, it's so That's good. my total favorite. And I love that he did, he did some Janet song. He did What Have You Done For Me Lately, which I was really? like. Really? That was mind-blowing. Yeah. I was like, yes, Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it obviously sounds like he has some deep connection to you. And yeah. And it's, it's really cool that you were willing to share that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you have, so you have also, you, were, you mentioned Janet. 
Yes. I mean, I, I feel like we're not doing a good service <laughs> to people if we don't talk about your love of Janet. Yeah, yeah she's I my mean, number one. She is your number, number one. one. Number yeah. one over Prince. Yeah. No, there's no, there's no question. Oh, wow. Like, we're in the top five. Okay. We're in the top five. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, probably two. <laughs> Yeah. But we're not I'm not gonna rank, but Janet is one. Okay. Oh, Anyone wow. that knows I'm not gonna me, rank, but Janet's one. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. The two to the, two to five comes yeah. and goes. I'm, it fluctuates. Yeah, but anyone that knows me knows Jan is number one. Period. <laughs> so there's when, nothing else. When did that happen? I guess it's, as a kid, I can't even remember probably the the first Janet thing that I ever saw, but I was like I'm an MTV kid. So sure. like I grew up in front of the TV, trying to learn all the dances. Oh, sure. Everything. And yeah. she was always just my number one, and it, is, it has just stayed my whole life. And now, like, I feel like we're in a, a re, another resurge, mm -hmm. and so it's even more exciting to sure. be Jan Fam and to be a stan because <laughs> she's back and, like, getting all this recognition. And, you know, this was my, when I came to the auction, that was my first auction ever. Yeah. And it was like, if I'm going to do an auction, I'm going to do Janet Jackson. Yeah. Right, right, right. Because... She means more to me than any other artist. Sure. And yeah, nothing, like everyone, anyone that knows me, it's like nothing makes you happier than Janet Jackson. That's yeah. it. So, so you, so you, oh, sorry. Yeah. What was your auction experience? Because that was your first it was like, exhausting. live auction, right? <laughs> It was exhausting. It was so much fun, but I didn't know what to expect. And, yeah. you know, I underestimated the fans. I underestimated yeah. the, the people that would come out in droves. Like I was, I very much was like, I went through the books and I was like, these are the 40 things that I'm going to get, you know? <laughs> right. And my partner's like, okay, okay, <laughs> calm down. He's like, you love her, but a lot of people love her. A lot of people have a lot of money. Right. He's like, so. This is an LA yeah, apartment. Yeah, he was like, so also that. He's like, so let's like calm down. And so, but the first day I was like, I'm here. I got my Janet t shirt on, <laughs> on my computer. Like, I was ready. And so, you know, I'm watching and I'm like, Oh, this is gonna be a moment. And I was at my computer <laughs> all day. Yeah. So from 10 to 8, watching every item. And so it was a humbling experience. And also it was like, so you can't get everything. Yeah. Can't get it. So I, I had to narrow down you know, what I wanted, but luckily we 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 just moved here yeah. to LA. And so we didn't have a couch. And I and I didn't know there would be furniture. Like I when I heard about it, I thought, okay, we're gonna do costumes right. and and so I had to think like, well, I'm not gonna wear any of it. So like, what am I gonna really get use out of? And then I was like, oh my God, there's furniture. And so we saw the sectional and we were like, we gotta get the sectional. <laughs> and I came in and it was here in, in, in store. And I was like, okay, all right, that's it's it. On. And then I was like, that's the last day. So I also was like, I don't know if it's gonna get crazier as it goes on yeah. or if it'll taper off. So after day one, watching everything, getting nothing, I was like, okay, great. So my expectation has changed. <laughs> and so for day two and three, I said, I'm only going to watch when it's things that I want, and I'm going to narrow it down to three things. So yeah. I ended up getting the three things that I wanted. So we got the sectional. It is in the house. <laughs> oh, it's so great. It's, <laughs> like, a, it's like a custom sectional. Yeah. Yeah. Those pads don't yeah. feel like normal couch pads. No, yeah. it's... I. I have spent so much time <laughs> just sitting there and just, so I'm going to get the picture of her sitting on it printed and put it on the wall. Good. Oh, good, nice. good. Um, you know, there's no, no shoes, no, no dark denim, no eating, <laughs> no drinking, no sharpies. Nothing. I'm giving you like booties and like yeah. scrubs to sit on the couch. Like there's not, none of that. None of, none uh, of Cody's glitter. No, no, no. Yeah, no, none of that. <laughs> nothing. Okay. All right. like, I can't wear black jeans on it. Nothing. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm so happy. It just makes me feel like full, like, okay, I have, I have checked off. I've stamped my Stan card. <laughs> no one can debate that I'm a Jan, I'm a Jan fan. <laughs> I have the sectional. I have these gorgeous um, candle holders that I got oh, and nice. a pair of skis. Well, I don't cool. know how to ski, but I'm learning how to <laughs> ski. <laughs> yeah, the Janet auction was pretty cool. And it was awesome to like see the fans. And I'm like you, I wasn't expecting what I, I wasn't expecting the the amount of people to come out and uh it was it was it was a cool experience even for me being that i worked it it was uh, yeah. it was a great yeah. experience well all the fans were like so nice and cool like even just coming the best in fans to look at everything it was just nice to walk around and hear other people humming along to the songs They're like oh we're yeah. all here for the same reason yeah <laughs> we love her we love her oh yeah well, it was, that's it was great yeah. well 
Uh, Donnell, thanks for sharing all this stuff with Spam. Thank you for having me. We appreciate it. If people wanted to follow you, you know, track you down, know when you're going to be the next singer, songwriter, movie star, where do they check you out? So I am the DJF um, on Instagram and Twitter. And then I'm new to TikTok. I'm learning the TikTok. (laughs) And that's my full name, Donnell James Foreman. I I will probably change it to the DJF, but we're not there yet. (laughs) Get the handle. Yeah, get the handle. And then, yeah, you know. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode of That Pop Culture Show. Join us next week when we take the brightest flashlight and go into the darkest room. And Jason scares me. Keep on talking.